Okay, so I got quite a reaction to that. Um, I'm only gonna kill your childhood like a little, little bit, I promise. So this is Disney Killed God, how God is dead at best in the Disney universe. I'll be exploring some of the other gods existent in the Disney universe and then how the Christian God slowly fades away over time. But first, now available to own on video cassette. So there are other established gods in the Disney universe. From Moana, you have the creator gods of Polynesia. You see here the cycle of how to be those creator gods, including rage for a thousand years because men are trash. It's important to note that anyone can find Tefiti, the goddess who pulls the islands out of the ocean, or Teka, who's raging. Maui finds Tefiti, Moana finds Teka. They're all there for people to see and interact with. There are also the gods of the Greek pantheon, as seen in Fantasia and Hercules, and as per established Greek tradition, they are assholes. <laughs> but again, you can walk up to the temple of Zeus and Hercules, it helps if you are Hercules, but you can walk up to the temple of Zeus and say, hey, and Zeus shows up. You can go to Hades and make a deal with the devil, and Hades shows up. There are other gods in the Disney universe, divine presences that aren't necessarily creator gods. You have Mulan's ancestor and the guardian spirits from Mulan. You have grandmother Willow from Pocahontas. And you have the shadow spirits, the voodoo spirits, and the princess and the frog. And as you can see, they can all be summoned by prayers and incantations, although slightly different varieties. These gods exist in this universe. You can interact with them. You can hang out with them. I can email this to anybody who needs a picture later. And now, our feature presentation. There is established Christian iconography in the Disney universe. Christianity itself is established in this universe. In Sleeping Beauty, Prince Philip carries the shield of valor with that big ass cross on it. In The Hunchback of Notre Dame, the entire cathedral of Notre Dame is established Christian iconography. And in many of these movies, we see that this Christian symbolism can be used to beat back hellfire, hellions, and hellacious creatures. The shield of virtue in Sleeping Beauty is invulnerable to lime green fire, lime green being the color of evil. And in Fantasia, in the Night on Bald Mountain sequence, Chernabog, a dark god, pulls up spirits from hell and they rage all night long until the coming of the dawn. And as we see in this picture, the tolling of the church bell. Every time the bell tolls, Chernabog flinches. So there is power in these icons, power coming from some sort of Christian symbolism. But over time, Chernabog is about the 800s. Sleeping Beauty takes place in the 1300s. Over time though, the Christian God begins to fade. Absolutely everything about Judge Claude Frollo and the Hunchback of Notre Dame should make us question the existence of God. He opens this scene by singing, Beata Maria, you know I am a righteous man. And he ends by insisting on sexual ownership of a woman, and if she refuses, damning her to hell. It's kind of gross. Throughout the movie, there are times that we're asked to doubt God's existence. When Esmeralda is trapped in the cathedral, she sings to God, I don't know if you can hear me or if you're even there. When our heroes, Phoebus and Quasimodo, are trapped in the gypsy underground, the court of miracles, Clopin the gypsy tells them the only miracle is if you get out alive. They do get out alive, but it's because Esmeralda shows up and tells everybody to stop acting like a dick. So if it is divine intervention, it's hidden, it's shrouded. It's not the same as Prince Philip's shield. By Pocahontas, God doesn't show up anymore. The white men come to Virginia for gold, God, and glory, mostly the gold, but also the God and the glory. In, on both sides, they're trying to cast each other as this inhuman other. It's a very weird song to listen to in the car, like going down 50 on your way to the beach with the windows down. The Powhatan tribe are singing, they're demons. Do they even bleed? 
and Ratcliffe's men are calling them heathens, their skins a hellish red, and both sides are calling on their righteousness, on their God, to come drive out this inhuman other. So who shows up? Peaceful tree granny. <laughs> Spirits of the earth and sky. Not pictured. The Christian God. So what happened to God? In the 800s, he's driving back Chernobog. In the 1300s, his shield drives back Maleficent. But by 1482, even though Frollo dies, his machinery of oppression lives on. By 1607, God does not show up at all. Not to say, hey, stop it. Not to say, hey, good job. He's just not there. But what happened? We need to zoom and enhance this timeline. 800's alive. 1300's alive. 1347, the Black Plague hits Europe. Did God get bitten by a flea on the back of a plague-bearing rat? Unclear, but by 1482, he's not doing so well. By 1607, he's been fully Nietzsche'd. So in conclusion, rats killed God.